This Sunday is Juneteenth, a national holiday that commemorates the end of slavery in the United States. All weekend long, there will be celebrations to commemorate the day. I sat down with USC Gould Law Professor Jody Armour to discuss what Juneteenth means to a new generation of Americans. Well, happy Juneteenth. <laughs> yes, back, back to you, too, Juneteenth. Yeah, well, let's just get right into it. What is Juneteenth? That's what I'm saying, you know, Black Fourth of July, Black Independence Day is one way to think about it. It is a celebration of the end of the second American Revolution. The first one was for liberty and justice for all, but we know it was not a complete revolution because people like me were still chattel slaves for people like Thomas Jefferson. So we have the second kind of American Revolution, 600,000 people lost in a cataclysmic race war. And at the end of that, we found liberation for black folk, right? A real kind of Fourth of July celebration, freedom, at last from the bondage that had characterized our lives up until that point. Yeah, and June 19th, just like Christmas, same day every yes. year, but I say Christmas because it's a celebration, right? Like people are going to be having barbecues, parties. Can you talk about how it's a joyous day? Oh, yes. You know, we often talk about the burdens of blackness because a lot of people don't believe there's still racial discrimination today. They do these polls, shocking, the num shocking number of people don't believe it, but we don't make enough room. Therefore, we take all the oxygen out of the room for the blessings of blackness to celebrate the many and varied blessings of blackness. And that's what Juneteenth gives us a, a chance to do. To think of the fact that we're like that rose that grew from the concrete that Tupac talked about, that against all these conditions of oppression outgrows all this beautiful art, all this beautiful music, literature, all of this beautiful creative flowering in spite of all this oppression. And we should be celebrating that for sure. Yeah, and we talked about Juneteenth last year. And since then, it's now become a federal holiday. Now, why is that so significant? Yeah, symbols matter, you know, public symbols, how we view ourselves collectively and recognizing as part of our collective history that the first revolution didn't bring us all liberty. You know, we needed the second one and Juneteenth resonates with that and it's still a, an unfulfilled project. We needed a third one, the civil rights movement to get rid of segregation. And now we need a fourth one because we walk through Skid Row and we see it's 75% black. We go into San Quentin in prisons, they're disproportionate proportionally black. So there's this kind of chain, these links from slavery to now that this holiday helps us reflect on and how in spite of all of that, we've had all of these successes. And reflecting on freedom um, here in California, um, I think that it ties into Juneteenth, what's happening uh, with reparations. Oh yes, the governor's reparation task force came out with an interim report very recently and they said California was complicit in slavery. Yes, they were returning runaway slaves. They didn't recognize that we didn't as a state recognize slavery, but if a, if a slave escaped, got away and got in California, we return them, right? That was California's complicity in slavery and acknowledging that, owning it, it was the first part of the report. And now the second part is remedies, but it's all part of this Juneteenth, this idea of history. History matters. Can we look at the world through historical lenses? Do we walk into, through Skid Row, for example, and look at the world ahistorically as just bad people making bad choices? or do we look at the world historically through these lenses that say this is the continuing legacy of slavery and this is what we started come overcoming with the Civil War. And what would you recommend for people to do, not only to celebrate, but people who aren't familiar with this holiday, what should they do on that day? What, what can they take away from this and learn? Yes, that this is connect this with the 4th of July, which is coming up it's right around the corner. And my dad was a proud patriot. He was a proud black patriot of the Second World War, a Marine, fought in Iwo Jima, and I used to wonder, how can you be a black patriot given this country's history? And he wrapped his arms around the promise in this country. It's promise of liberty for it. We're struggling toward that, right? It's an unfulfilled promise, but black folk are an important part of making that promise real for all people. Because as we fought for black civil rights, all civil rights has been, have benefited. Yeah. Well, Professor Armour, thank you so much. It's always so great to chat with you. Always great for me to yeah. chat with you. And Daniel. happy Juneteenth again. <laughs> thank you. All right. Thank you, Professor Armour.